So uh, I wanted to talk about strumming patterns a little bit because it's a, I've noticed it's a problem for a lot of students. So what I'd like you to do is to pick a, a simple chord. And for us, I think it's just the G chord. We're going to use a, a truncated G chord. So if you just want to put your your uh, finger, doesn't, doesn't matter which one, third finger, because we're, we're not using a left hand much except to hold a chord. So put your uh, finger, first finger, if you like, on the third fret of the high E string or one string. And we're going to play off the one string, one string, two string, three string, and four strings. We're not playing the five and six strings, so we're just going to strum with those four strings like so. So what that's going to sound like is uh, this right here. Let me show you. And I'm just moving my thumb back and forth on those four strings. So I'm not worried about the five and six strings. So if we typically songs have uh, a lot of songs that we're working with have a count of four, so they're four four time. Uh, that means you count them one two three four one two three four. When we're strumming though, we can count um, one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight. So it's like actually eight counts, right? And what we're counting is a downstroke and an upstroke like that. But just for our for our, the sake of our sanity, how about if we think about it in terms of four? like four beats per measure, and we're going to use the word and instead. So that would be for the downstroke, as you're strum, strumming down, you'll say a number. When you strum back up, you'll say the word and, and, strum down, the next number, two, and, three, and, four. When we get to four, our thumb is below, right? But we want to get back to the one position, so we're going to say and again, so it's continuous. That will sound like this. One, and, two, and three and four and one and two and three and four and so that's not bad and that's a good rhythmic way to play but it's very simple and we can do a lot more interesting interesting things if we start leaving out some of the strums either downstrokes or upstrokes or combinations of them let's try a simple one so i'm going to strum down one and two, but I'm going to leave out the and, so I'm not going to strum up. Instead, I'm going to strum down three and four and. In time, what that sounds like is this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Without my talking in the background, it would sound like this. So if we're going to tap that out, it would sound like so. So we're leaving out the second and, actually the fourth, uh, fourth up, so second up strum. So down one, up and, down two, leaving out the up and, down three, up and, down four. Uh, bend. Again, it sounds like this. One and two, three and four and. One and two, three and four and. So you try it. See, it's not too hard. That's a good thing to get under your belt. But we can go even more sophisticated than that. So it started to sound more, a little more interesting, right, than just the down, up and down strokes. If we take out another um, up, upstroke, let's take out the one that's on the, uh, the, uh, the fourth and. So that would sound one and two and three and four and so in time it would sound like this one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and without my talking it sounds like this Here it has an entirely different sound than, the, than if you just take out one strum or if you don't take out any strums. And there are tons of ways that you can do this, and they get very sophisticated. And the more, um, the, for, oddly enough, the more that you leave out, the more interesting it gets. So I would uh, practice these, uh, just these two little ones with taking out the second and and then taking out the fourth and, um, and see how you do.